Praise God, everyone. Praise the Lord. I'm excited that I can be here today again to share God's word with you as we continue our series um, operating in the uh, supernatural. Thank you so much for uh, watching. Thank you for uh, joining in. And while the others are joining in, um, I want to um, give a shout out to all the frontline workers, those that are out there working hard. And um, also uh, people that stepped in to help because we are home and these are the time and moments to be very, very creative, become creative and, and help. See what you can do to help someone else in need. Um, don't wait, but find a way to help. If you can't be there physically, then send a donation to help out send it to the right organization, send it to your charities or your churches so that uh, people out there can receive help. Uh, thank you, Roger, for uh, tuning in. I see you. Um, hope you had a great day today. So uh, as I want to encourage you to help support um, uh, those that are out there working hard. And if it's not necessary to leave your home, please stay at home. Today we'll continue our series, um, How to Operate in the Supernatural. I'm excited, I'm always excited when, uh, when it comes to the supernatural. Thank you, Abigail, for, uh, for, for joining. Uh, I'm so glad to see you here, Abby. <laughs> uh, thank you also, Danica, for, for joining. Um, oh, y'all know the time. Thank you guys for, for joining. Today we have an interesting session and it will be awesome. We'll be talking about the how to operate in the supernatural. And, uh, and I'm always excited when, when it comes to the supernatural. It is so that a lot of people in the church, in Christianity, don't know the concept of operating in the supernatural. So, so it's now more than ever the time to operate in the spirit of God. So I told you earlier that last year God spoke to my heart. One of the things that he gave me five things that will be happening in this decade one of the things that he spoke to me, he says that the church will be operating in a power that the world has never seen before. Thank you, Linda, for joining. I appreciate you and your family. Thank you, uh, Pansa Romeo, for, for, for joining. Uh, the, the church will operate in a power that the world has never seen before. What power is he talking about? He's talking about the supernatural power. The supernatural power is something that was given unto us to operate in. So it's a shame if the church is not operating in the supernatural. As we learned yesterday, I'll give you a brief recap and then we'll move on with this session, that we have to do three things. The first thing that we have to do is to create an atmosphere of worship. The second thing, create an atmosphere of prayer. And the third thing, create an atmosphere for the presence of God so that God can dwell at all times in the atmosphere that you have created. So, so it's your responsibility to set the tune, to set the, 
the, the atmosphere for God to operate on your behalf. So as a believer, now I'm speaking to believers because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, this is what it says now. Natural is what Paul means by the, the first uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 2 and verse 14. He said, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he does not, is not able to understand them because they are spiritual, spiritually discerned. So natural person don't have the spiritual understanding to understand the things of God. Thank you, Zelda, for, for, for um, joining. The natural person don't possess the spirit of God to discern the things of God. What are the things of the spirit of God? Uh, that the natural person does not accept or are able to understand. What are these things? They are the content of preaching. They are the content that, that Paul uh, referred, as Paul says, that Christ was risen, and we just celebrated the resurrection. Christ was risen through the power of God, and now he reigned with God. And these are the things that natural people don't understand. And if you don't understand spiritual things, it's impossible to operate in the spiritual realm. It's impossible to operate in the supernatural. The word of God, the cross, is, is, is foolishness. For the world, because they don't understand the cross. They don't understand the purpose of the cross. As Corinthians, um, as Corinthians 1 18 says. So they don't understand it. First Corinthians 1 18 is that now, since this is what it, what it says. Now, since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through that wisdom. It pleases God, this is what, it pleases God through the folly of what we preach to save those that believe. What we preach is foolishness to the world. What we have to offer is foolishness to the world. But it pleases God to take that foolishness and give that to the world so that they can come to the faith. This is a spiritual mystery. So we have to set the stage here. The world don't understand what I am teaching right now. They don't understand because I'm teaching spiritual things. I'm teaching things that you will understand by revelation of God. And so therefore, it's important to start with first one in order for us to begin to enter into the supernatural power we have to create number one create an atmosphere of worship we have to create an atmosphere of prayer thank you Ingress for joining I appreciate you we have to create a atmosphere of for the presence of God so because <clears throat> the Bible says there is fullness in the presence of God God dwells in a place that we created for him and it comes with certain requirements and the first requirements that he says is faith. Mm. We'll talk today about faith and you will begin to see faith in a different way, a different atmosphere. Faith is the Bible says 
that there is a faith that the Bible called death faith. If you believe without work, it's dead. Your faith is dead. There's no action behind you. It's dead. Dead. But now here's what it says. If there is a dead faith, then there must be a living faith. Today, I want to talk about the living faith. Because this is what going to help us. We'll talk about the living faith. The faith that will place an action behind. Because your faith without action is dead. But when you put action behind it, then it will come alive. The supernatural, to understand how the supernatural work and to operate in the supernatural, it will take faith. And what faith does, it goes against logic. What is the first thing? It goes against logic. So your logic understanding, your logical way of seeing things, it will go against it. You will be able to allow that part to function if you have created the atmosphere for God, the atmosphere of worship, prayer in God. If you created that, God will help you. He will help you so that your faith when it start going against logical things, that you can have the strength to say, God said it, I believe it. So that's where people are going to look at you crazy. That's where they're going to say, wait, 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 wait. No, I think you are taking this too far. I think you misunderstood the word. No, you didn't. Because remember, the natural person don't have the discernment, but you have the discernment. So God will give you discernment. He will give you things to discern. So you will see things differently. How? Differently. Because the natural person cannot accept the things of God because they have a natural mindset. And may I tell you this? that there are so many people in the church today and even church leaders who are functioning and operating in a natural mindset. Yes, you can operate and you can function and you can be very successful in a natural mindset, even in preaching. But your preaching won't be a preaching that is based on revelation. It's not going to be based on miracles. It's not going to be based on the supernatural. It's going to be based on the human philosophy. It's going to be based on just your, your human knowledge. But the spirit of revelation is not there. For example... We see a lot of people who are motivational speakers. They are great in their speech. And they reach millions of people. Well, it's good to be motivated. It's good to be inspired that way. But the word of God is different from a motivational speech. Because the word of God is based on revelation. In other words... When the word of God comes, things happen. Things happen. When the word of God start moving and operating, things start happening. And so many believers and Christians are using that same trend of motivational. That is not based on revelation. That is not operating in the spirit. It's like any other motivational speech. That is not what God is doing. 
That's not what God is going to do in this decade. What God will do, he will use preaching that is based on the spirit. Because while you are preaching, the spirit is moving. Things are happening. Thank you, Albert, for joining. Domini, Domini, thank you. The, when you start preaching the word of God, under the influence of the anointing, something is happening. Something is being transformed. That is where real change occur in people's life. A motivational speech will help you make you happy for that moment, but a real transformation won't take place. It won't touch your spirit. But the word of God will come and will touch your spirit because it comes as a two-edged sword. It will cut on both sides. It will cut, it will come as a hammer or it will hit whatever needs to go, will have to go. The word of God, when it comes in its fullness, it will offend you. It will cause you to pause and think. When the word of God comes with anointing, it will not only bless you, but it will deliver you. It will set you free because the word of God is the truth. And therefore, it's good for us to know the truth. And when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. So it is important for us to know that because we heard the truth, it will set us free. So our faith can become a faith in action, a living faith. John 8 verse 33 says something. It says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It will set you free so that you can begin to operate in the steps towards the supernatural movement of God. The, I wish, like I said yesterday, I wish I could give you just a just a, 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 a booklet and said, hey, here are five steps to operate in the supernatural. That's not how it works. I wish I could do that. This will take an effort from you. It will take a conscious effort to operate in the spirit of God. The steps that we are following now is the step of faith. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. It will soak your mind in the spirit of God by the word. By what? By the word. By the constant setting your thoughts on it. How do we become free? Because this is, this is interesting. It's something that we hear all the time. Oh, you, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. How? If it, if it was just by saying it, then everybody would be free. Isn't that so? It's not just by saying it. How do we become free? How does the word of God set us free? Remember this. If you didn't get the first uh, session, please listen to it because then you'll understand better what I'm saying now. As you have to be free from your past. What I said yesterday, you have to be free from your past in order to operate in, 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 in your now and your future. You have to be free from the past attachment, from the past hindrance, from the past thing. You have to be free. This, the, when you hear the truth, the truth will set you free. And and, and I said also that if it, you need somebody to pray for you, and if you don't have someone to pray for you, how do you do it? No problem. Here's the answer. The, 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 the word of God will set you free by you. you. You have to soak your mind in the spirit, in the spirit of God. 
by the word, by constant allowing the word to fill your thoughts. Because every time you allow the word to fill your thoughts, new revelation will come. The revelation of truth will produce supernatural faith. Let me say it again. You have to allow, you soak yourself into the word of God, into the spirit of God. So because when you do that, and constant setting your thoughts on it, on the word of God, constant doing that, he will begin to give you revelation of truth. Revelation of what? Of truth. So when he began to give you the revelation of truth, it will produce supernatural faith. And that's the faith that I call living faith. It will produce supernatural faith. Listen, this is important. The supernatural faith that I'm talking about is only when you allow the Spirit of God constantly to fill your thoughts, everything that comes, you cast it out. Every imagination that comes in your mind that goes against the Word of God, cast it out. You, Everything that comes, you commit a sin, you say, Father, forgive me. Every time you're constantly using the blood, you cleanse yourself constantly. There is enough blood, it won't run out. Cleanse yourself constantly and fill your mind, your heart, your thoughts with the word of God because it will produce supernatural faith. Supernatural faith in your heart. Here's the, here's the thing. It will also produce, this faith will produce by the revelation of the word of God. The revelation of the word of God. Hebrew 12, 2. This is what Hebrew 12, 2 says. It says, look away from all that will distract you to Jesus. Because who is Jesus? He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the source of our faith. He is also, this is what it is, also the finisher of all things that he started. Jesus started this faith and he is the source of it. Everything that we need in it is provided for us to bring our maturity to perfection, to bring this faith into perfection, to bring this faith to a living faith. So therefore, our mind, what we do, how we handle, how we behave ourselves is very important if we want to operate in the supernatural power of God. We have to soak ourselves in the spirit of God. So by doing that, our mind will be filled with the word, constantly filling your mind, constantly filling your soul with the word, with the word. And by doing so, he will give us, it will produce a supernatural faith. Because if we have to move in the supernatural, it's not something that we have to force. No. <laughs> you don't have to force it. It's by you obeying the word, then it will happen. It's not something that you have to force. It's either you have it or you don't. We will be talking about the power of God and what, you, what the power produced. We'll talk about healing, deliverance, and and. and and miracles and signs, all those things are things that God 
wants you to experience. It's great if you can read it in a book. It's great if you can see it on some TVs. But it is the will of God that you have a personal experience with all these promises of God. It's a promise to operate in the supernatural. And if it's something, if you do it right, it will begin to manifest in your life. And if you don't, it won't manifest. It's either you have it or you don't. I remember we had a uh, evangelistic crusade where we, a, a, a tank meeting where for days where we preach and, 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 and bring people to Christ. And as we were preaching, after every time we preach, we will uh, do an altar call, bring the people to the cross, and we'll pray with them. And they'll give their heart to the Lord, and then we pray for whoever needed deliverance, whoever needed to be set free. And those are moments where is either you have the power to pray for people or you don't because these people are sinners. Come out there out of the world, come to your meeting, and they need to be set free. So I remember in one particular meeting as we were praying, and there was this, uh, um, this other minister who was also part of the prayer team. As we were praying, all of a sudden, he disappeared. And you know, it can be very, very busy when you pray in front for people. So, and, and it's such a great crowd, uh, you know, it's a big crowd. And all of a sudden, this uh, minister disappeared. And um, we turn around and look for him and we said, where is he? And all of a sudden, we saw him next to the podium, almost underneath the podium in a chokehold. This man who was filled with a demon choked him and he couldn't get out, he couldn't get himself out. So we had to go and rebuke that uh, demon over this man so that this man became free and then he let go of this other minister. What am I saying? If you don't have the spirit and if you don't move in the supernatural, you will be tormented by the enemy. You will be, your family will be tormented. That's why it's imperative that we have the spirit and we can operate in the supernatural. Today, especially in the Western world, it's sad, but it's true. If we are in our church, our nice and fancy and beautiful services, and a demon manifests, people are like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Mm, I don't want to deal with that. Get him out, get him out. I don't want to. It, you, no, no, no. Deal with it. Just get up and point your hand or lay your hands on that demon possessed per person and cast the devil out in the name of Jesus. And that person will become free. We need to operate in the supernatural. We have what it takes to operate. So come back here tomorrow at 8 p.m. I'll be continuing with the teaching on how to operate in the supernatural. Remember today's lesson. Quick recap. That the sinners cannot understand God. And what, God, what the, the preaching of the gospel is foolishness, but Christ has taken his foolishness and used it to bring the sinners to him so they cannot. And at times, we as believers, we can operate in a natural state of mind and yet want to see a supernatural uh, uh, production. It's not going to happen. You have to operate in the supernatural and you have to have living faith living faith supernatural faith that's living faith and that comes by you hearing the word and the word will set you free how do you become free? 
by soaking yourself into the Word of God and constantly allowing the Word of God to fill your mind, to fill your spirit, to fill your heart, and it will produce supernatural faith. It will produce living faith. The faith that will help you, it will empower you to go against logic, to go against what is normal, to go against what is impossible. But because of faith, it's not you are doing it, but it's Christ. So therefore, you can operate in it without fear, even though you will have opposition from those that are around you that are not moving in the supernatural. But you can move in the supernatural, fearless, because you know your experience with Christ is different. May God bless you. May God bless your family. And if you've heard what I've said and you said, you know what? I don't know the God that you're talking about, but I want to come. I want to become part of, of what is going on. I want to give my heart to him. I'm here to lead you to Christ. I'm here to uh, bring this word. Pray with me. Pray it from the bottom of your heart and the Lord will hear you. The Lord will answer you. Pray with me. Say, Father, I am a sinner and I need a savior. Forgive me all my sins and cleanse me with your blood. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. If you have done this prayer, you are a child of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. And please, after, after this pandemic, find yourself a Bible-believing church. And if you're not joining one yet, find one and serve God. And for those of you, I thank you for being here. Sarah, thank you so much for joining Thank you for being here till the end. I'll pray with you guys. Let's pray. And I'll pray that God will help you so that you can begin to walk these steps and this path to operate in the supernatural. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for believers all over the world. Thank you that in spite of what we are going through, in spite of the dilemma, the calamities, the pain, the hurt, Father, the danger, that we can learn about your word. Father, thank you for these people. Everyone that can hear me, Lord, touch them. Give them the strength, Father, to fill them, their hearts with your word, to fill their minds with your word, to emerge Father, as a new person. Father, because of your spirit, because of your presence. Lord, touch us. And let your supernatural faith begin to operate in us. The supernatural faith. Father, you said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find not, and it will be open for you. We seeking, we asking, we knocking. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, this is so good. I love the Lord. I love him, and I love to talk about the supernatural because it is such a freedom to operate in the supernatural. It empowers you, and you become free fearless because he has not given you a spirit of fear but he has given you power love and a sound mind god bless you god bless your family please stay safe uh, take heed to all the uh instructions of your local officials and once more thank you all the frontline workers thank you all the teachers and all the nurses i know you guys know everything thank you for uh being so um uh, be, be, being, being, being so uh, 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 strong in the midst of uh, of what we are going through. Thank you uh, for helping our children. Thank you for helping the sick. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you, and we pray for you. God bless you, and God bless everyone. And I'll see you again next time. Blessings.